for most of us, when we think about artists, we think about people like Yo-Yo Ma playing the cello. Or we think about the books of Toni Morrison. Or the paintings of David Hockney. Carrie Mae Weems photographs. Or movies by somebody like Steven Spielberg. And artists do all of that, right? They, they play beautiful music. This is Yo-Yo and his fabulous Silk Road Ensemble. Artists play beautiful music and they write books that transport us and show us lives that are different from our own. Artists paint pictures that are absolutely delightful. They take photographs that might challenge us. And sometimes they just make a great movie that entertains us. And our lives are richer because of all of these things that artists do. So I'm going to talk to you today about four artists, and they use their skills a little bit differently. They take their skills, their perspectives, their talents, and it's all about how they make our lives richer. These artists are community leaders. They are social entrepreneurs. I call them artist innovators. This is Aurora Robson. Aurora is a visual artist. She grew up in Hawaii, and because of that, she has a really deep connection to the ocean, to water, and to nature. Today, in the work that she does, she cares about the environmental impact of plastic trash and the effect it has on rivers and streams. So she takes plastic trash, and she turns it into absolutely beautiful sculptures, beautiful installations. Now, from a distance, I always think that this looks like blown glass. But then you, you get up, you get close to it, and it's a bottle cap. It's, it's a juice carton. It's some kind of piece of plastic packaging that you threw out in your recycling, right? She, she takes these beautiful, she takes these, these, she makes these beautiful things out of something that's ugly and, and even something that's harmful. And by transforming plastic trash into art, she's creating an opportunity to have a conversation to make an investigation about the effects of plastic on the environment and to bring our attention to how much plastic we use and then what happens to it after we're done. This prompts us to think about how something so beautiful can also be harmful. Now, Aurora works in her studio, but she also works in communities. And she organizes community members to clean up the river near them and to make art objects together from the plastic trash that they collect. So they're transforming trash into something absolutely beautiful. And they're making a difference where they live. This ensures that people understand what reduce, reuse, recycle actually can mean close to home. Working with other artists, Aurora has worked with artists and designers and architects who are all actively using plastic debris. And together, they've started something called Project Vortex. And Project Vortex is all about supporting organizations around the world who clean up waterways and raise awareness about plastic pollution. So she's gone from the studio into the community and into the world. This is my friend Robert Karimi. Robert is a uh, performer, a comedian, and a cook. Robert makes healthy messaging delicious, and he does it by connecting theater and cooking. He promotes health and well-being, especially in communities of color, especially addressing issues like type 2 diabetes. Researchers at Arizona State University are studying what Robert does. They're studying his program. And what they are looking for is to understand how what Robert does can drive health outcomes. So now just think about this. Think about sometime in the future, you go to the doctor and you get a prescription. And it's not a prescription for a pill or a medication that you have to take. It's a prescription to go and see Robert Karimi in action. It's a prescription to go to a play and take part in this interactive performance, in this interactive artistic experience. Robert knows that food is at the heart of community, and the experiences that he designs bring people together. It gets them cooking together, gets them eating together, and in the process of that, they share stories. 
They talk about their families, where they come from, what their culture is. They share traditions through food. And what, what happens when, this, when, when people exchange like this? It strengthens bonds between neighbors. It happens through performance and storytelling. The, the cooking is what makes it fun and delicious, but it's promoting good health, it's promoting community cohesion, and what Robert does is he makes all of these ideas very, very personal. Marty Pottinger is a writer and a performer. She's up in Portland, Maine. Marty is also the founder of Art at Work. Marty focuses on improving municipal government. So she works with elected officials, civil servants, union leaders, community members, and she builds community trust and resilience. She does it through making art. Art at Work projects have focused on things like raising low morale in the police force, diversifying neighborhood associations, connecting police officers and youth after there's been a controversial shooting in the community. What are the tools that Marty uses to do these things? Drumming, singing, photography, poetry. These are her tools. When people are making art together, they actually get to know one another. And they will drop the typical adversarial positions that might, they might take on other issues. So they, they work together, they get to know one another, they build trust with one another. And then, if something happens in the community, like a few years ago, with the Occupy movement, there's already an open line of communication between the Portland City Police Chief and the founders of the Occupy Main movement. So this is an example of art making as a tool to make government run better, to make communities run better. The Astor Gates is a visual artist and a performance artist, and his work on the south side of Chicago epitomizes creative placemaking. So what's creative placemaking? Creative placemaking happens when artists, arts organizations, and community development leaders actively, deliberately integrate arts and culture into community revitalization work. Creative placemaking brings arts into the discussion about community priorities. And I'm talking about things like public safety, transportation, education, economic development, infrastructure, land use. Art can be part of conversations about all of these basic, fundamental community issues. The Astor started with three abandoned houses on Dorchester Avenue on Chicago's south side. He transformed them into community art centers and he opened them up to the neighborhood. His efforts have absolutely caught a spark and his work has grown. It's grown beyond Chicago, it's moved into other cities around the country, but in Chicago, it already includes affordable housing for artists, an entire arts block which is in collaboration with the University of Chicago. The Arts Block started with uh, some, some gallery and studio space, and it's now grown to include uh, retail space, restaurant, there's gonna be a whole new performing arts complex that's part of this. So it's an entire block that is on the border between the University of Chicago campus and the rest of the neighborhood. And then most recently, the Astors worked with the Stony Island Bank Building. This was a building that had been shuttered and in disrepair for decades. It's on a major commercial corridor, and it's now recently reopened as a vibrant community art space. So artists are revitalizing neighborhoods, they're transforming buildings, and they're creating opportunity. These are just four examples of how artists are working in communities. Another way that artists lead in communities is by using their tools and their talents to start businesses. Artists have helped start some of the most popular businesses of our current, current age, and I'm talking about companies like Kickstarter and Etsy and Airbnb. These are big global companies. All of them had artists on the founding team. But because most artists are not simply commercially minded, they're not necessarily gonna just be commercial entrepreneurs. Most artists I know are socially minded. They're gonna be social entrepreneurs. And that means a lot of them, when they start a business,
they're starting a social purpose business or a B corporation. So, so what does this mean? If you haven't heard of B corporations, B stands for benefit. That means social benefit. A social purpose business, a B corporation, these are for-profit businesses. They're companies, they make stuff, they sell it, they earn money. But while they do, they're doing it, they are also treating their employees well, treating their community well, and treating the environment well. The companies are balancing making money with being sustainable. They're businesses that want to be a positive force in their community. 10% of B corporations in the United States are in creative industries. And many of these socially aware companies in creative industries were started by artists. These companies are part of what we call our creative economy. And in the work I've been doing lately, I've been thinking a lot about the creative economy. That's the part of our economy that harnesses art and culture and design and innovation. The part of our economy that's made up by creative industries, everything from culinary arts to to fashion, to game design, to industrial design, architecture, as well as music, film, book publishing, theater, and fine art. Our creative economy in the United States is more than $700 billion. Just think about that. $700 billion, and that number is growing every year. Now, whether or not you yourself, you're an artist, the creative economy matters. We are all consumers in the creative economy, and increasingly, even those of us who are not artists will be workers in the creative economy. Over the course of my career, I've been very lucky. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in rooms with really smart people who were hardworking and very dedicated to trying to make the world a better place. They've been thinking about the pressing problems in our community, in our country, and on our planet. And frequently, these conversations move in the direction of how can we bring more creativity to solving complex dynamic challenges? How can we bring more creativity to seizing high potential opportunities when they come around? The conversation is about how can we be more creative? But the people around the table are usually people like me. They're people who went to business school or they went to law school. They might be doctors, they might be engineers, they might be agronomists. The conversation is about how can we bring more creativity to address problems and opportunities. But the most creative people that I know, artists like these, they're rarely in these conversations. I'm hoping that that's going to change, and I'm hoping that that's going to change very, very soon. Artists are innovators. They are ideators. Just look at Aurora and Robert and Marty and Theaster. What are they working on? They are working on complex dynamic challenges like the environment, like our health, community safety, community wealth building. Artists are quint quintessential innovators because of their endless curiosity. They experiment, they take risks. But even while, I while addressing complex and dynamic questions, artists are able to work at the human level. And that's what's really special about artist innovators. Artists translate big, big issues in a way that we can relate to them. They take big issues and they turn them into common sense in a way that they matter to families, in a way that they matter to neighborhoods. The artist Mary Frank once said to me that she specializes in the human condition. So just, just think for a minute what that means, the human condition. That's us, right? When Mary goes into the studio, when she goes into the community, she's thinking about us individually and collectively, and all of her work is focused on that. Artists take these big issues and they make them accessible. They make them personal. They make them matter. Understanding, really understanding why something matters is the first step to doing something about it. And it's the reason that artists are effective as community leaders, as social entrepreneurs, and as innovators. Because artists can make what matters to them matter to us. I started out by thanking the artists who have shared their, their work with us today, and I would like to end by thanking them again. 
the best way that I know to shape our communities to be inclusive, equitable, and sustainable is for our communities to be creative communities. The best way that I know for our economy to be inclusive, equitable, and sustainable is for our economy to be a creative economy. This can only happen when artists are in the, in the community as artists, as social entrepreneurs, and as artist innovators, making art, being leaders, and being business entrepreneurs. We want artists in our community innovating in ways that we haven't even thought of yet. But if I know the artists, I know that they already have thought of it. And so with their help, all of us will be moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.